left off. Um, Charles was Mr. Charles was talking about accountability. Um, can you continue from where you left off? Uh, thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again. As I was saying, uh, when we were very young, uh, you know, around PMDC time, Rollins talked about accountability so many times. And I mean, when you're young, sometimes you're thinking, you know, what is he talking about? But in reality, that is what we need today. We need to revive. We need to revive that idea. We need to put that word accountability at the lips of every politician. You know, they need to hear this thing so many times that they are actually doing it. Because when you have accountability, you know, you know that what you're going to be doing, we are, you're going to be accounting for it. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be accounting for it, then you need to be able to demonstrate that you did it properly. I mean, we go to school and somebody gets first class, second class. You work hard because you know that at the end of the day, your lecturer is going to say, okay, well done, Eric, you got 90%. You're at the top of the class. Yeah. You've been, you know, this is an accountability of the work that you yeah. have put in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some kind of a reward, naming and shaming. But, <laughs> but, but I believe that when it comes to accountability, every, every single sort of um, project or every single objective of a particular party or a particular government i think the 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 the, the boss the big boss should be the first person to be accountable so I'm, I'm thinking that if they are able to amend the constitution of ghana in such a way that the president is not immune to any aftermath in terms of accountability and responsibility of what has been happening in the past, then if there is no immunity, then any president that comes will be very careful with the people that work, work with him or the cabinet or the, the, the member of parliament that work, the government in that structure, isn't it? That work with that president. Because you know that you are not immune to punishment. You are not immune to any accountability. So then after your tenure, they can investigate you if they found you guilty you'll be imprisoned i think if it starts from the top then, they will work. then it's going to work it works like because the president knows that his back is on the line so he's not going to allow people to trample over him and then miss embezzle mishandle funds and then go scot free and this is exactly what is happening in our country there are so many issues that happens that come into play and then you, you, you realize that nothing happens. We heard that there's going to be special prosecution and all that. Everybody was happy that, no, you know what? People that have spent or uh, embezzled funds of the country will be, will be jailed, will be processed and jailed through the courts. We haven't seen anything like that. So it means that even those that pass, the, the ex-presidents and all that, nobody's accountable for anything. So anybody can come in, do whatever they want to do, and get off without any accountability. So I think it's, it's a very critical topic that we need to discuss because it's, it's serious. That puts our country in, in, in jeopardy when it comes to progress. So... Um, um uh, we try to maybe uh, see what is happening. Maybe we get a little bit more into details to see what's happening, uh, say, with MPP and DC administrations. And uh, as we said, this transition thing and this accountability thing is very important. So, for example, so, so can we, before you carry on, can we touch on the general overview of development? How do you see Ghana, and how do you think we are we are we are progressing from this time? Uh, in terms of development, uh, what I have maybe observed over so many years, I mean, I, I wrote a paper in Berbeck, uh, the impact of Ghana's economic recovery program on the balance of payment. I wrote that paper in 96 as part of my dissertation uh, at Berbeck for my economics uh, degree. So I've kept a close eye on Ghana over the years to see how Ghana is progressing. Obviously, for the most uh, uh, time, it was President Rollins in power. Obviously, as a military leader, 
uh, and also as um, a democratically elected leader. So you have from 79 to uh, 1992. Okay, see, in 79 he was off and then back again. So we just say, you know, so you're looking at a period of about 21 years, which is a very long time. Um, in those times, and I would say that Chairman Rollins had um, a lot of power, a lot of power, obviously being a military leader and also becoming democratically elected. You know, there's always that element of, yeah, he did, you know, he, he had a lot of power. And so within that 20, 21 year period, you can transform a country from say a poor country to sometimes you can transform it to almost an advanced country in terms of your economic growth. Twenty-one years is a long time. It's a long, to, long time. Yes, to urge the country forward, isn't it? Correct. Um, so what, what 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 do you think? Do you think he did good or um, it was all? It's 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 interesting. Obviously, the, he was a military leader, so sometimes his subject. You know, when you're talking about Rollins, it's a very complex subject. But some of the things that so you, he did not have any sort of clue of how to run a country um, when he was a military <laughs> man before he was elected again. So it, it got worse because there was no clue of how to run a country, isn't it? Um, that no political the, the, background. The, there is yeah, there is that lack of political background that a, a, a sense of the ma level of maturity also probably the, educa politics, the education yeah. and, and those things was not there but the charisma and that inner desire that to, see, to see Ghana grow and to see uh, he had compassion for the ordinary Ghanaian. the ordinary Ghanaian I think that is a very uh, it's a very touching thing I've seen him work like work i mean i can roll up my sleeve to do stuff but i can see you know if this president comes or military leader comes to do something you can see that he's really in it doing it passionately so those were very good qualities mobilizing people so for example one of the very good projects which wasn't executed properly but it was a good project was the gss system so you've had uh, Ghana that was producing so many lawyers and accountants and bankers. You know, when we were young, the only two or three professions that you could do, <laughs> your parents will allow you yeah. to do, was these professions. But with the JSS system, we were now changing into builders. You see, you need to encourage builders. You need to encourage vocational people. You need to encourage the people that can get their hands dirty to transform a, a, a country. country yeah. So for example, Ghana as we speak now, we've sold 5% of our entire bauxite to the Chinese, right? And we are in the process, it's all part of the process of taking a, 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 a loan of $19 billion. Mm -hmm. So we've sold 5% for $2 billion, expecting a loan for $19 billion. For the Chinese, and with that, with that 19 billion, are they going to continue to drill to get more bauxite? Uh, yes, because we don't know the the condition. Obviously, with the 20, with the two billion dollars, mm -hmm. that is to take five percent mm -hmm. of the entire Ghana bauxite reserves. Entire. Yes, five percent. Are you saying entire? So, okay, let me explain to you. So, My goodness. So let's say Ghana has got a port of bauxite. Uh -huh. If you look at it, say like a round ten. Yeah. 5% of it uh -huh. has been slashed uh -huh. to the Chinese, okay. right? Ghana is getting $2 billion from the five dollars from that 5%. Uh -huh. Probably all these projects, because sometimes Nana is doing a lot of projects, building this, doing this, doing How that. are they going to even quantify the 5%? Because the Chinese will come in and get more than that if there are no regulatory bodies Controls. that will... Control, control, control the, the 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 mining of that bauxite. This is this is serious issue. So 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 for example, if we were to obviously you, you know let's talk about it as if it's all written in contracts and in law, it says that five percent. So they obviously those people who do quantities of surveying or whatever type of surveying that they do should do and tell us okay maybe from and I, I think the the bulk of it is having at 
Okay. In the 81 region, right? Mm -hmm. And in this, we are also in the process of Welcome taking Welcome back. Um, let's carry on from where we left off. Um, Ghana getting, um, is it 2 billion? Uh -huh. So <laughs> of the 5% bauxite that the Chinese are coming to mine. All right, let's carry on. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you once again. So now we're delving a little bit deeper into the figures and what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, where we were talking about obviously the GSS system that was not properly pioneered. And so the idea is good because with the GSS you are going to be creating uh, artisans and builders and carpenters and you know people that can develop the nation. Build the nation. The nation, yeah. They can build the nation because we see we are taking this money from the Chinese because the Chinese are coming in to build railways, they are coming in to build dams, they are coming in to build this because they have builders. And so, in the next stage of our development process, is as, go is at, as going back to that drawing board mm -hmm. of this thing that was started by Chairman Rawlings, this mm -hmm. GSS system, mm -hmm. it was not pioneered properly. Mm -hmm. The monies came in from IMF, monies end up with district commissioners, they spent all the money, they did not do the projects, they got the villages to build um, the, 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 the schools. Mm -hmm. So I am the district commissioner, I am sending the money, it comes through the channels. I'm saying it because I know it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it because I I actually worked in Ghana Bank mm -hmm. uh, in Cheapside and, and I actually saw that money coming because I was responsible for moving the money to Ghana. So I'm not only saying it, I moved the money myself. Mm -hmm. When I was in Ghana and I went to some of the villages, I saw that the amount of monies that were coming in was not translating even five percent on the ground. On the ground, right? So this is this is our problem. It was not transferring. Uh, it was not transferring. Mm -hmm. But if assuming that the monies came in mm -hmm. and it was made accountable, properly executed, accountable, and the people actually properly went in used. there, used those monies to build the technical institutions and the schools and mm -hmm. got the right equipment for the students to use, today we wouldn't be selling our bauxite to China. We will be processing the bauxite ourselves because we can build the, the, those factories. So as you can see, that education system, it was correct, except that the execution of it and then. Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching. Uh -huh. So, uh, um, as we were saying, that uh, the education idea, the GSS system was correct. Yeah. Because obviously, when it's all demand and supply, isn't it? When the colonial guys left Ghana, we needed a lot of administrators. We needed a lot, a lot of people. So, so where, where you are, you are cutting to, I think you're talking a little bit about corruption, isn't it? Because the money that you, you observed mm -hmm. that you were actually part of the process of yes, transferring uh, that into that Ghana myself. wasn't used no, uh, it didn't transfer for the purpose of the what ground. it was on the ground. Know, and so what, what you do is that you've got a good idea mm -hmm. in terms of the execution of the idea mm -hmm. uh, uh, was not there. So you couldn't properly manage it. You couldn't properly control it. So all mm -hmm. comes into that, those leadership issues that we mentioned earlier. You couldn't manage it properly. You couldn't control it. You didn't have trusted people to do it. I mean, as a, as a head of state or... Um, a, a democratically elected president, you cannot possibly be seen to be running after everything. You need to have trusted people. You need so to people. You, you see, one thing I, 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 I have also observed myself before you even carry on with this. Um, I've had experience of being um, a procurement manager in one of the um, timber firms in Ghana. Great. And I had the experience that the reason why I'm saying it is about corruption. Sometimes that individual hasn't got even an element of corruption in that person. Mm -hmm. But the people around you will push you, push you, push you till you mess up and then you embarrass yourself. The experience that I want to talk, you know, the, the reason why I'm saying that 
most of the presidents might not be corrupt. Of course. But the cabinet, the people around, surrounded, the, the people surrounding that person yes. will push that person into so many dark areas that there will be disgrace at the end of the day. When I was employed at that particular place as the procurement manager, I had the opportunity to, you know, um, sort of manage funds to buy equipment, to buy materials for the workers to, to work. And these workers will continuously be pushing you left, right, center. Oh, can, can you inflate this for me so that you can give me maybe five cities? Can you do this for me that you can? And then you end up being enemies because you are not allowing. succumbing. You are not allowing it to happen. And some will even go to the extent of even taking you to the juju. So if you are not prayerful, they will even disturb your life. So the reason why I'm saying this is most of the presidents don't come as corrupt. That's right. But the people around them will push them into that area by fire, by force, whether you like it or not. Because I've experienced it firsthand and I know what I'm talking about. I had a clear conscience, clear clarity of mind. And I'm, I was there to help that company to move on. But, you the but left, right, center, the challenges that were coming, I had to just um, resign because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So you can carry on with, with yes. you know. So this, um, so obviously he had certain vision, you know, to do things to, uh, in those days we were, Ghana was mainly dependent on agriculture and all that. So sometimes they, even when people went to watch Sini, Sini, you know, like they go to Odeon and yeah. Rivoli and all that, a truck will come, load all of them to a farm to go and work. They, they, they were doing everything to get Ghana to sort of, work and you know sort of self-contained you have a champion who also did this operation feed yourself in chroma gave us the blueprint but we did not carry on we didn't continue continuity Ghana that's why you're talking about continuity the blueprint they should amend that, that constitution to had reflect reflect that. set mm -hmm. if Ghana had continued mm -hmm. with this blueprint yeah. we will be I mean, we'll be there with Malaysia and all Taiwan and all these because we were we had more money than them. In yeah. the, our GDP per capita was actually higher mm -hmm. than even China back in the day. We probably may if we weren't better. What I don't get is on paper we look good, mm -hmm. but on the ground it's not so good. We started off well, mm -hmm. so obviously when the British left Ghana, Ghana, I mean we were supplying cocoa, gold diamond bauxite you know and chroma had had factories set up you know he's built the akosomo dam and power is key so for example the way i see things in chroma is teaching ghana with power you can work 24 hours, hours yeah right so a country's productivity depends on the power double mm -hmm. with power mm -hmm. so if you go and sell anything from ghana the first thing you have to invest in is power. Day and night, that country should be able to operate. To work, yeah. And this is how the Western economies, they beat the African yeah. economy. Mm -hmm. Because in Africa, we are only 12 hours operating 12 hours. These guys are operating 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So in terms of national output, they will be able to double, 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 and, and leave us behind. So Nkrumah saw this in, you know, sort of go back to 1957, between 57 and 66, he is doing all these projects. So if we had that transition system to look at what, how much was he given? What did he use the money for? And what was he doing? Can we carry on with his work? If we had done that, I can assure you that today Ghana will be an advanced economy, right? So we have the Akosumbo Dam, and we were always at Kosumbu Dam, selling it to Togo, selling it to Nakodibua. You have the sun. The sun is there 24-7. Mm -hmm. So when you take that money, you invest it in solar power. If you're not able to build the solar power, get a, a Dutch company. Get a foreign company to come and build that solar power so that you've got that power. When you have that power, all the other development process will roll. roll. 
industries will, will grow. But if you turn the power off, you can't use a machine to cut anything. Your things in the fridge is going to go uh, crazy. You can't even get your computer to work. So power, if you, if it's, it's key. Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching.